I have my daughter's Nintendo Switch here and she told me it won't power on anymore. I've tried all the basic troubleshooting tips um, to get it going again, but no luck so far. Uh, I tried uh, doing a hard reset by holding the power button for longer than 10 seconds. Uh, tried a new charging cable, but I don't even see the, uh, the battery icon in the top left corner anymore of the display. Uh, so I suspect it's likely a hardware problem, but luckily for my daughter, her dad's a computer engineer. So I'm going to open it up and see if we can figure out what the issue is. So if we hook this up to a USB amp meter, we can see that it's drawing 0.47 uh, amps. So I feel like we probably have a pretty good USB-C port, uh, but I would have expected it to draw at least one or two amps to recharge the battery. So uh, I'm going to open the switch up and see if there's any obvious signs of hardware issues. So I've never opened up one of these before, but the first thing I noticed is that the uh, four screws on the back are the uh, Y0 bit. So you're going to need a Y bit uh, to get these, uh, these four screws off in the corners. Next we're going to remove the five Phillips screws on the left side and the five Phillips screws that are on the right side. I see two more screws next to the uh, USB port on the bottom and one more screw underneath the memory card holder. And last but not least I see one more screw at the very top of the console. Once the screws are all removed we can just gently remove the back plate. Looks like we have to uh, also remove this metal plate and I see seven screws for that. So there's one there, one in that corner, one down here, one over here, uh, a couple over here. So we're going to remove those uh, seven screws next. All right, once we have the uh, screws removed, we can just use our little pry tool and pry that metal piece up and over. All right, now that I have access to the board, I'm just gonna do uh, some quick diagnostics here. First, I'm gonna check the fuse. Make sure I have continuity. Continuity in the fuse. And continuity in the coil. Now I'm just gonna check and make sure that I have no shorts on these capacitors. You want one end connected to ground, but not both. That one's good. 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 Oh. We have a short cap right here. So that usually means that either there's a bridge somewhere on the board which is highly unlikely because this was a working switch at one point. So I bet you either something in this chip or something on the back of the board um, is probably shorted out. So we're gonna have to now disassemble this unit and see if we can figure out uh, which, which chip is actually shorted here. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just disconnect this battery here. So that just pops straight up like that. And then I'm going to remove the heat sink, which is these three screws here. Once the three screws are removed, I'm just going to pry this up. off and I'll just remove this piece here with those two screws all right now I'm going to remove this screw here and then these two ribbon cables now we can remove the uh, three screws for the fan all right now I'm going to remove this ribbon cable here and this white cable here okay Okay, a few more ribbon cables I need to remove. That one there. That one there. This one here.
this one here. This one right here. Right here. There we go. Okay, so there's just six screws that I can see that are holding the motherboard in place. So I'm just gonna remove those six screws there. All right, so I have my motherboard out and I've plugged it in again. And I was using this uh, thermal imaging gun to kind of navigate around the board to see if there's any chips that are hotter than another to see if uh, I can find out which one is causing the short. And when I hover over this chip right here, the heat gum jumps up to about 34 degrees. So it looks like this one might be uh, the one that's causing me problems. And it's the P13 USB chip. So uh, we're going to go replace that chip and see if that uh, solves a short. Okay, I got my uh, motherboard mounted firmly on this uh, board holder here. And now we're going to be using my uh, hot air rework station to uh, remove that chip. And uh, we're using a microscope as it, the... Uh, the chip is, itself is very tiny, so I'm just going to add some Amtec uh, 213 flux around that uh, chip and then we will uh, use the hot air to remove it. All right, it looks like that came off pretty clean. We didn't knock any other components off. So I'm just gonna go and clean this up with a little bit of uh, rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip, and then uh, we'll reflux it and get the new one on.
All right, we got the area cleaned up and uh, everything's all pre-tinned. So we're ready to put the uh, new chip back on. And we just gotta remember that the uh, pin one with the dot goes in the bottom left-hand corner there. Okay, so after uh, after replacing the P13 USB chip, there's no more short on this capacitor, so that one's good. But uh, doing a little more inspection around the board, I did find another short on a few capacitors over here, and that's not good news because uh, the other side of this area here is the uh, main CPU, so. Um, I'm not going to go and replace the CPU. That's just uh, it's just too much work um, and too difficult, too expensive. So if the uh, main CPU is shot, this board is pretty much shot. But uh, just in case it's actually a bad capacitor, what I'm going to do is remove uh, these capacitors and see if the short still exists. I'll just take off one at a time. Uh, these are filter capacitors here, so they're not required. They're basically just like a uh, an army you, and each one is like a soldier. You don't really need every single one to to guard uh, the, the chip So I'm going to remove probably that one And that one there And uh, we'll see if it's if we get lucky and if it was just a bad capacitor All right, so this is one of the shorted caps that I'm going to remove.
Okay, so looks like these three at the bottom here are also shorted. So I'm going to remove all those three. Okay, so we have the caps removed from the uh, back of the board there where the CPU was. And we're gonna see if we uh, can turn it on now. I have everything reassembled and plugged in. And it's not looking good. So it looks like what we probably have here is a shorted out CPU. Uh, CPUs are about 250 US, so it's really not worth uh, trying to replace it because a used switch is only about 300 bucks. Um, and also uh, you pretty much need factory equipment to replace a, a shorted out CPU. So it looks like this one's a no fix, but uh, we'll just use this for uh, for donor parts on uh, on another switch that needs it. 